in the original animated show, did the head have their seatbelts on? Transformers War for Cybertron Siege was colorful. Transformers War for Cybertron Siege was dark. <laughs> Transformers War of Cybertron Siege was talky. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, the podcast in which we watch first episode of a series so that you don't have to. But you still can. Yep. <laughs> you guys, spoiler, I have something huge to tell you guys, but I can't say it yet. It's going to be this crazy coincidence magical moment i i can't believe it my my mind is blown anyway so we are reviewing of course in, in Trans show? yes <laughs> transformers war for cybertron siege uh it's on netflix everybody and we have our very special guest today it's peter holmstrom hello thanks for having me on author podcaster extraordinaire uh we also have dr muhammad nor wearing a cool sweater Hello, always a pleasure to be on Falling Towers. Watch the first of things. And my name is Ryan T. Husk. I'm wearing a Transformers shirt. Or yes. am I? Nope. Incubus. Oh, I trick. transformed. <laughs> yeah, I did. Good <laughs> trick. All right. So everybody, uh, right now we are in March. We are doing cartoon reboot and spinoffs month. So this is obviously a spinoff or reboot of the 1980s cartoon Transformers. So if you'd like us to review a cartoon or animated series, whatever you guys want to call them, in the comments below, type WTF and the show and where we can view it. So in this case, you would have said WTF, Transformers War for Cybertron Siege on Netflix. And we would have done it this time. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Also, so, don't forget to like and subscribe too. So important. And if you're listening in, please give us a five-star rating and a nice review. We'd really appreciate that. All right, Muhammad, it's going to be fun. Where do we go? Now we're in a predicament where we predict what each other thought of the show without giving away whether we liked it. So, Peter, welcome back, by the way. We're super excited to hey, have you. Thank this you. Is, I'm glad this to be back. Only your second time here, so you may not remember. This is already my favorite part of the show. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited <laughs> for it. This part right here. We're going to make some predictions because Muhammad and I know each other pretty well. Peter, we know you fairly well. We'll see if these mm -hmm. predictions are close. Dr. Noor, I predict that you did not enjoy this show. You said it was dark. You're not a dark kind of guy, you know, not dark for dark's sake. I think I think you like things light and fun and interesting. And sometimes if that's dark, that's okay. But I feel as though this may be not, might not be your thing. And I also don't think you were a big star or sorry, Transformers fan <laughs> back in the day. Everything starts with a star nowadays, especially yes. Star Trek. I don't think you're a big Transformers fan back in the day. So I don't think this was like a welcome home, like it may have been for some others who may have viewed this. So I'm going to say that you're going to be fairly low. You're going to be around a four on this. Mm -hmm. Peter, I think you're going to be a little higher. I think you're going to be like right around a, but I don't know if you like Transformers. I don't know if that's kind of your, your thing. I'm going to say no. In fact, I think you may have given me a hint that you didn't <laughs> watch a ton of it now that I think about it. So I'm going to put you right in the middling range of about a five. Those are my predictions. What do you think, Dr. Knorr? Hmm. Well, we have a little bit of a hint that Ryan and I have already watched the 80s Transformers together. <laughs> so, I know you were a fan of the old Transformers. And so the, using the verbiage you were saying, this might be a little bit more of a welcome home, but it's not the same kind of welcome home because it's not exactly the same. So I don't know. It's one of those things that could go either way in the sense that you could be like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe they made, you know, Bumblebee not an Autobot yet. Or, or if you're going to be more <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> or it's more just a like, oh, this is an interesting reimagining of the whole show, you know, and stuff like that. So I have lots of questions for you about it. I still think you are at least OK with it. I don't think like you came into it like this is the best thing. Oh, I'm so excited. But I think you're like, OK, I think, you know, so. 
five to a slightly above five range. Wow. Peter, you made an interesting comment. You said it was talky. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I, mean, I guess similar. I, mean, I guess similar that, like, you know, even though you maybe hadn't watched it, you were like, okay, I, I, I see where this is going. I see an overall development here. Maybe not quite my thing. So maybe, again, it's five or slightly above five. So pass the baton to you, Peter. Uh, okay, so... Uh, Muhammad, I'm going to say you're pretty low on it, actually. I, I think you don't have quite the nostalgia hit that some people would have for the Transformers. Um, and, you know, you do like things a little more, maybe maybe a, a little more grounded in a way than uh, Transformers can be. So um, I'm going to say maybe a three um, and maybe even a two. I don't know. Wow. Um, Ryan, I, uh, I, I do oh, think you're... <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, I think you'll you'll probably rate it a little higher, um, but still kind of middle of the road. You, you'll give it a few like nostalgia bumps, a few like, oh yeah, you know, I remember watching this years ago, and it is fun to see that it's still around. So I, I might maybe I'd say a five. All right, everybody at home, I don't know if you noticed something, but we all said six or lower for everybody's <laughs> prediction. Does that mean that we just don't really have confidence in the other person's nostalgia factor or that we didn't watch it or whatever? Or do we all think it was terrible? I don't know. I don't know. In the uh, comments below or in the live chat, make your predictions. Did I like this show? Transformers War for Cybertron Siege. Did Muhammad like this show? Did Peter Holmstrom like this show? This is going to be a toughie for all y'all. Make your predictions now. Take your time. No rush. Dr. Knorr here is going to buy us a little bit of time by telling us what this show is even a boot. I will. So the war between the Autobots and Decepticon has dragged on and their world is crushed. Autobot Wheeljack hires unaffiliated Bumblebee to help find some Energon, but they get caught by some Decepticon. Things escalate as both Megatron and Optimus Prime arrive, but the Autobots escape, along with Bumblebee, Bumblebee grudgingly. Bumblebee is brought to the Autobot headquarters and see lots of damaged Transformers. Optimus asks Bumblebee to join, but he insists on remaining independent of the factions. Meanwhile, Megatron frames the recent encounter as a problematic insurgence movement and talks up crushing the resistance to the cheers of the Decepticon. That was good. That sounded, that was one, good there. one one qualm. I think plural of Decepticon is Decepticons. Ah. I liked your spin Fair. on it though. I was like, yeah, they should call them like we are the Decepticon. Uh, Sounds cooler that way. Anyway, they actually put in the S. Okay, good to know. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Um, all right. So everybody, okay, Muhammad's ready to go. He knows. Tell us all where we're going with this one, Muhammad, Dr. Noor. I mean, my favorite part of the show. It's even better than the first one, but, uh, or at least to some, at least to me. <laughs> Just kidding, right? This is what we like to call expect getchin. It's where we spend a little bit of time on what you expected before having watched the show, and a lot more time on what you actually getchin as you do watch the show. So, or as Ryan says, far more eloquently again, we like to compare and contrast what we expected before watching the show with what we actually got. After having watched the show, that's eloquent like AF. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's just do that then. That sounds like a lot of fun. Dr. Knorr, before you watched this first episode of Transformers War for Cybertron Siege, episode one entitled Episode One, what did you expect, if anything? So, I mean, I had watched the trans the old Transformers cartoon, not like a ton, but I watched it enough that I knew some of the characters in it, things like that. And we discussed this back when we watched the, the show originally. But it wasn't like it wasn't a show that I watched a lot. I mean, I, I knew, you know, I could tell you who some of the main ones were. Like I remember Starscream the whiny guy that was the jet and things like <laughs> but a lot of the the sort of less popular transfer. I never had any of the toys or anything like that. I didn't know any of them. In terms of in terms of this particular show, I didn't really know anything. I assumed it was the Transformers coming back or continuation of stuff. I remember from the general 
discussions of people that Optimus Prime had died in one of the earlier cartoons, but then I think was brought back to life or something like I, I never watched all that, but apparently that all happened at some point. <laughs> so I was I was thinking that either it's a continuation or a reimagining, but the specifics aside from these two groups fighting each other, I didn't know. I didn't know whether it was going to take place on Earth versus on wherever it was. I forget what, where this was actually taking place, their planet. <laughs> but really very little. I mean, aside from just animated and it's the Transformers again, and they're probably going to be fighting each other. <laughs> That's about it. Interesting. By the way, everybody, uh, Muhammad referenced it. Episode 128 is when Dr. Noor, myself, and Rico E. Anderson reviewed the original Transformers. Uh, the Hasbro version. I don't know if this is still Hasbro or what, but that's episode 128. Check it out. Did we like it or did we not? I'll give you a hint. We are all very close in our ratings on this one. Uh, well, true this time. Peter, before you watch this first episode, what did you expect, if anything? Uh, um, I... Uh... I, 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 unfortunately, I'm, I'm not as familiar with the Transformers franchise as a lot of people are. I know it's a big, a big franchise, sprawling franchise. Um, I've, I've never seen the animated series from the '80s, which I hear was great. I never saw the famous movie with uh, Orson Welles as Optimus Prime. I, I never saw that. Um, so going into this, I'd, I'd seen the Michael Bay movie. Um, I think I saw the second Michael Bay movie. Uh, and I heard everybody liked Bumblebee, but I, I have not seen that movie. So, um, going into this, my expectations were, uh, I don't know what to, what to say I expected. Um, I honestly, I expected it to take place on earth for one thing. Cause like, that just seems like where everything takes place. You, you have your human characters you're following and then they run into this, you know, intergalactic war or whatever. Um, uh, although I guess maybe if I, paid more attention to the title of the series i might have you know gotten a little hint there that it wasn't going to take place on earth but uh i also expected it to be a lot more action heavy um uh you know a bit more of an, an adventure ride uh because there are literally cars and i was expecting a, a, a ride <laughs> but um but uh so yeah there you go interesting well i'll tell all y'all what i expected if anything um i did watch the cartoon quite a bit, quite extensively as a child, and the movie. And we all went nuts for the movie. We're like, what? Optimus Prime? We, you know, it was pretty crazy. Um, I had a bunch of the toys, and I played with them. And uh, I think I saw that first movie that Peter just referenced, the Michael Bay thing, and it was okay. It was... Okay, it was very machiney, which I guess it's supposed to be, but it just felt it was weird. I don't think I saw any after the first one. And now I think they have a new one called Bumblebee, specifically about Bumblebee. Anyway, so that's the extent of my Transformers knowledge. Pretty good, but not so much like the newer stuff. So I expected to enjoy this because all I really need is to see some of my old favorite Transformer characters and be like, whoa, that's what's his. And that's what's his shit. And that's who's it. And be really excited about that. So I was expecting to uh, have a good thrill ride of nostalgia. But that's what we expected, everybody. Pencils down. You're going to ask something, Muhammad? I was going to ask, wasn't Ratchet your favorite? I remember you really liked Ratchet, I thought. No. No? no? Okay, man, I remember something else then. Maybe. There are a few that I like. Which one was Ratchet? I don't remember, but I probably just remember that name that you, that you said. I feel like Ratchet before. was a white van. Oh, maybe not then. I'll have to Google and make sure. I think <laughs> it was a it white <laughs> van because each Transformer, the toys, had like two of each kind. Like there was a red van and a white van. And the red van was, can't remember, but he was one of the main characters in the thing. But he was really crappy as far as the toy was concerned. Those two toys were like the worst ones because they didn't have like yeah. real heads. Their heads were like a sticker. Kids will buy anything. Anyway, so um, God, what was his name? Was that the toy that, that had one? the mayonnaise, or is that a different toy? Oh no, that's a He Man. That was a He Man. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, the He Man story. If everybody, if you want to hear the He Man story, 
Uh, that's a little further back. I don't remember which number that was, but it was with our good friend Darnell Davis, who joined us for that one. And we had a great time talking about He-Man. Still looking. Oh, there it is. Um, episode 34. Uh, Michael Kenny that's Rosenberg, great. Darnell Davis, and I talked about He-Man. Anyway, so everybody, pencils down. You got our predictions. You got what we expected. Hopefully you wrote down or typed down exactly what you think we thought of this episode, because now we're going to tell you all what we actually got, Dr. Knorr. So alluding to things that, uh, especially Peter said, I was a little surprised how much talking there was. <laughs> there was a lot of talking in the show, it's true. I'll say, let me start with the good parts. The the, the graphics were good. I mean, I thought I, I enjoyed them. I thought I found it visually appealing and I was able to engage with it. It was weirdly dark to me. Like, what is this? It's like the depressed Transformers. <laughs> it was weirdly post-apocalyptic, dark. You know, let's look at these, you know, injured soldiers. And like, what? <laughs> that to me was a little odd. I was thinking, like, I'm not sure who the target audience is here. Because if it's a bunch of kids, they're going to be like, what is this? I don't want to see this. <laughs> I didn't mind that. I mean, for me, I don't mind post-apocalyptic shows. That was all right. But it was just unexpected. Uh, there was a lot of world building in that sense of, of and it was a, almost like a recreation. I think this is actually I wanted to ask Ryan because I don't remember the original show that well. There are a lot of like characters who came up and aspects which came up like, I don't remember this being true from the old one. So maybe in that sense, it is a reimagining or maybe I just missed some things or started late or something like that. I did find it's kind of slow. <laughs> so coming back to the points that you guys were saying, I was I was definitely expecting a much greater pace on it. And it was just lots of like, this war is taking such a toll on us. Like that refrain was just so common through the whole thing. Like, okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> let's move on there. I mean, I didn't hate it. You know, especially if I was, let's say, like a high school kid, which was, you know, I think I was in high school when the original ones came out. Would I've watched this instead of the other one? Probably. I would have been. I would have been a little surprised at even then too. I would have watched it. I mean, I wouldn't go for surprised that I, I like loved it or anything like that. But it's okay. You know, just just okay though. <laughs> from at least just from this first episode. So mm -hmm. I'll stop there. I have a lot of specific questions for you guys for later, but I'll I'll let Peter say what he thought first. Uh, to me, the the thing that really jumped to mind was this: this is a bottle episode. Which is bizarre because it's both animated and theoretically the first show should be your most expensive. So I'm not really sure how uh, and where it goes from here. Um, but really, the, the show takes place basically in three locations. Um, there's a lot of talking in ways that is not like, you know, I mean, in, in terms of screenwriting, it's like, you know, characters revealed through action. This There's not a lot of action in the either just either drama or or actual action it's it's a lot of just like talk you know stating the way the world is and stating how characters are um very little conflict um i, I was i was i was honestly a little perplexed i was just like what what is what is what is this like why you know because the transformers from my understanding and from my limited awareness it's it should be very action heavy it should be like you're moving very very quickly and this was more just like, let's just talk about how horrible this war is. But like, why do we care about the war? I don't know. And it was just, it, I was very perplexed, very perplexed. You had a good laugh out of Muhammad there. That was good. Um, oh, check this suit, guys. I was right. Ratchet is the white van. Oh, like, a, like an ambulance almost. Yeah, he is the ambulance for sure. And then I still can't remember what his red counterpart was called, but there was it was exactly like that, but just painted red, and that was a different character. You know, you know how toys were back then. Anyway, so I'll tell all y'all what I actually got. Okay, so here's the surprise, you guys. Here's the surprise. I'm gonna cut ahead, and my final note on this show. My final note was. It's kind of just boring. And then I put and talky and dark. And it was so funny that when I said Transformers was colorful to just not give anything away, Muhammad said it was dark and Peter said it was talky. I'm like, what the? <laughs> you even said talk. I'm, I'm like, I felt so excited that I made up a new word. I'm like, this show is talky. <laughs> and you literally said that. So apparently that's a thing. 
But so that's what I felt about it. It was boring and talky and dark. And uh, it wasn't good. Oops. Was it? Oh, well, bummer. Wasn't good. That's, that's where that's I have lots where of I, questions for you guys about it. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. But, you know, it wasn't it was it was talky. It was they were just blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. That's how they're saying it though. Blah, blah. It's a good, good impression. Blah, it's a good impression. <laughs> and it was just like, can we have anything? A little humor, a little fun. I mean, these were all actually there were a couple characters I didn't recognize. So I don't know. I think and I think and, and this would be a good aspect of you know screenwriting if they did this, because this is clearly a prequel, because Transformers was the story of the Decepticons and the Autobots that retreated from Cybertron and they landed on Earth and then they adapted to become Earth vehicles. And so this is clearly the prequel of what led up to them fleeing to Earth. And so it would only make sense that there were a couple main characters on Cybertron that died on, you know, because the guy... Ultra Magnus? Yes, Ultra Magnus was one. I did remember that was his one name, I was going to ask, but I don't remember from what. But I remember hearing his name before. And the other one was Jetfire, who was mm -hmm. like in charge what of what do they call them? The Seekers. So I guess that was the airplanes, the jets. Jetfire was in charge of the jets, which we know later Starscream is. So clearly something happens to him. Maybe Scar Starscream kills him, and Ultra Very Magnus likely. maybe dies. And anyway, so that's where we are. Um, so the story though the whole Alpha Trion thing how like the Alpha Trion would be ashamed and they worked together before like I don't remember any of that is that like all new is this or is this something that was in books or something I don't know well, actually were the Transformers books I don't know <laughs> <laughs> at least <laughs> comics for sure yeah um, I feel like Ultra Trion sounds familiar just like Ultra Magnus does but maybe I'm just Imagining that because they all kind of sound similar. Yeah, they claim that Megatron killed him too. Like, oh, this is an interesting backstory. I don't know any of this, but okay. And what was Megatron? I kept rewinding trying to see when he was transforming because in on Earth he's a gun. He's literally yeah. like a pistol. He was like but, a tank, wasn't he? Yeah, he looked like a tank to me. Yeah. Well, those original ships in the very beginning to me looked just like Colonial Vipers from Star yeah. Wars. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, oh man, I miss those Transformers. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that was a question I had for, for you guys who are a little more familiar with the franchise. But like my understanding was, and you mentioned this a minute ago, but that like the the Transformers came to Earth, they saw cars and they emulated yep. them to blend in. So theoretically, they shouldn't look like cars and, and when they're on their home planet. Uh, I'm, I understand like maybe you just have to do it for our iconography purposes or whatever. But like. It made me wonder, like, why, why, why not go a whole different direction with this? Yeah. Well, the funny part is that they are like this planet's version of a car. It's like a different car. It's not quite a VW bug, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, the jet isn't quite a jet. It's like a weird hover kind of thing, right? But the funny thing is when they transform at, into robots, they look identical. They look <laughs> so, identical yeah. so I'm like, so you look exactly the same, but when you transform, you have a different shape. So I don't. So that's why they kind of had to keep it really similar because if they look, if they transform into something different, then anyway, it's all weird. Yeah. They're just like, this is for kids. <laughs> kids won't notice. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's weird. The other question I was wondering about is Megatron was like weirdly, I would say eloquent, but well, maybe it's a statesly or things like that. Like I, I wrote one of these quotes This war was started as a revolution, not a genocide. For a better Cybertron, we must reach their sparks and minds. Like, I don't remember the old Megatron ever making a statement. <laughs> no, and he was saying that his people were initially enslaved. And he was like, we were born and bred into slavery. I'm like, whoa, there's a lot of depth to Megatron. Before, he just wanted to kill things. Exactly. Now, he's like, <laughs> now he's like tortured and tormented and kind of right, you know? I don't yeah, know. you reminded me like the, what's the, the Magneto? You reminded me of like Magneto in a way. Yes, I, I felt that too. I definitely got that that vibe where it's like okay so he's not even really a bad guy 
He's just kind of the opposition. So that actually leads me to something I want to ask you guys, because that's where I was when he was talking was I was like, wow, he's actually not. I don't know. It seems like he's coming from the right place, at least. But then at the end, so I'm kind of a little befuddled by this. Then at the end, he's speaking to legions and legions of people that are cheering him and loving him and all agreeing that those final few Autobots must be defeated. And I thought, I was like, wait, so the Autobots are the bad guys because we have a majority here of this planet that just wants to be free. And they came from slavery. They busted free of slavery. Now they're fighting this faction and they've almost got this faction defeated and they're cheering and they're like, yay, we can live forever without. And then they're, I'm like, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> Decepticons, the good guys. What do you guys think? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, fascism has a lot of positives. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> the trains were on time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody had jobs. They all had places in this auditorium. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> but I, 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 oh, go ahead. No, no. I, well, um, just very quick. I just, I, I did almost. There was a moment where I almost thought they were going to do something clever, and there was. I forget who who was talking to whom to be honest with you but i think i think it was megatron was talking to one of the autobots and the autobot was like uh uh you know freedom is the right of every sentient being and then megatron i think it's megatron right am i i, mean, I hope i'm yeah. not mixing that up yeah, but like true. megatron is, is like ah the words of your leader which i was like oh so in the end this guy's also not free he's just following the rules of following the leader of someone else and i was like that's almost clever but then they kind of pulled they like it's clear they didn't they weren't thinking that when they wrote it that way they stumbled like, oh, into man. it <laughs> they stumbled into something almost interesting and yeah that's then they, a good uh, point but uh, i did like um when megatron was talking about starscream i like this guy like his arrogance I actually like <laughs> i love that quote right a little more depth that i was surprised about that i was like well that's actually Pretty good, Megatron. You, yeah. The way he's like, tut, tut. Actually, that part I like. I, I thought yeah. that was nice. Megatron's a good guy. Like weapons from his weaknesses. <laughs> Megatron, he sees the good in people. Even the ones that are really shitty, he's like, well, he does have some redeeming qualities. Also <laughs> notice that the robot felt pain when the robot had its hand cut off. He was like, yeah. ah. I'm like, wait, it's just circuitry. Yeah. Well, there was the doctor made the comment. It may look bad, but I assure you, it's as bad as it looks. <laughs> I thought that was, like, was funny. Long. Oh, by the way, the doctor, I looked it up afterwards. It turns out it's voiced by Todd Habercorn. Oh. Uh, Todd Habercorn, some of you may know, was in Star Trek Continues mm, as Spock. Spock and a bunch of other amazing voiceover work. But that's what we recognize him in the Star Trek world from. So was, was Alita new? A new character. I mean, new to me. I don't remember her like in the original stuff, but maybe she's in the, the movies. You know, I don't know if this is a spinoff yeah. of the original thing or if it's a spinoff of the Michael Bay movies. I don't really know yeah. how this all yeah. fits in to the lore. But the, here, let me tell you guys one one pet peeve I've always had with uh, Transformers. Bumblebee. I don't like Bumblebee. I, I didn't. I never liked him in the cartoon because he was a, a VW bug there. They have Lamborghinis. They have jets, they have, you know, war tanks, they have dinosaurs, and they're like, and here comes this VW bus, so that's really cool, blah, blah, blah. And then in like the movies, they tried to make him a Lamborghini. I was like, no, he's not a Lamborghini. Sideswipe is a Lamborghini. Everybody knows that. Bumblebee is a VW bug. And then in this thing, they try to make him some tough, super cool. I'm like, no, he's Bumblebee. That's not cool. Anyway, that's always been weird to me that they really kind of beefed him up as as time went on. And I didn't really like that. I didn't like him. That's all I, I got on like Bumblebee. Little, I <laughs> like him. He was always like, Bumblebee. <laughs> yeah. I thought the voice actors that they found were were good. You know, they sounded different than the original characters, but they they were good. They sounded fine. They sounded fun. I liked them. But they did still have a whiny star scream. I loved it. Like, yes, yeah. they kept the whininess. 
the guy that did Starscream before was the same voice, certainly, as Cobra Commander of G.I. Yeah. Joe. Had to be. It was clearly the same guy. Anyway. Well, Peter, did you have a favorite character? I mean, you have a lot to choose from, from which to choose. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, I think part of the problem I had with the pilot, too, is like I found it very hard to really distinguish. And I know like that's not I don't know how much fault that is of the script or of, of the acting or 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 just the the scenario. I mean, it could be this is viewed as like part one of six. And so like you need to like it's it's more of a movie. So in the end, you you don't really get much of a much of a sense where the characters are. Um uh, so I, I couldn't really say I have one like none of them really stuck out to me. It's like, oh, that's that's really cool. I mean, it really took me a very long time to under to even register that like, oh, this this guy's Bumblebee here and he's kind of like the Han Solo type because they don't they don't even call it out early on. And it's just uh, uh, so I don't know. I'm sorry. That's not the answer you're looking for. But I just uh, I just it, yeah, I got nothing. Maybe it is the answer we're looking for, though. Uh, I'll take one of those like crowd guys in the auditorium. <laughs> the, the guy on the right, I really like the way he was in four like, F. Rah. Yes. <laughs> uh, what about you, Doctor Nor? Who was your favorite? Was it Megatron? Because he's kind of a swan. Awesome. It's the most interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't like him, but he was the most interesting. So, in the sense of like, okay, I'm curious to see what he's going to do next. I remember mean, just remember being really surprised as he was talking, like, "Wait, what? This is not the old Megatron at all." <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't have uh I'm trying to find out who the red van was in, back in the day. I can't remember his name. Um anyway. So, I didn't really have a favorite either. Yeah, I think Megatron was the most interesting character by far. They gave him the most depth. I don't know if they did that on purpose. I don't know if they realized that they he was the only guy that was kind of a character, like a real Mm -hmm. meaty okay. character and you know wheel jacks okay i think he's like a porsche or something like that or he's something like that he was a pretty fast car but they didn't have any of like the really cool cars and i also thought it was weird that when they're running away to escape the bad guys they're jogging yeah <laughs> you're not like you're a corvette or <laughs> what a change go you know i don't know how fast they can walk but i know that their vehicles can go faster i mean so didn't was, we see them at the beginning doing the viper thing like that was cool i was like i want more of that i just yeah. uh i figured the end of the episode is going to be like a big chase through you know a la like you know attack of the clones mm -hmm. or something i mean just going through all these like menage of the you know this downed uh, planet and whatever and it's like no no we're just gonna keep talking <laughs> <It's bizarre. laughs> that's what the red van is called iron hide god that was bugging me uh, iron hide. so, iron so you see it's the exact uh, same thing this yeah. is ratchet this is iron hide and look their heads are in the window <laughs> That's... So when they transform, their head is just sticking out of their chest. This is their chest. It was the cheapest. Anyway, so that was kind of a ripoff. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. In, in the original animated show, did the head have their seatbelts on? <laughs> That's <what laughs> in the original <laughs> animated show, the head would come <laughs> out of the thing, but it didn't do that when you bought the toy. They were just sat oh, there. It was, yeah, it was like a seatbelt face. It was just. Uh, sit there. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sad and then their legs were weird they were like backwards it's just a hole just keep them transformed as a van just leave it at that anyway so did you guys have a least favorite character maybe i, mean, I didn't think wheeljack had much substance so i mean i didn't find it very interesting i, mean, I wouldn't say i hated him or anything but he was just kind of like eh. who is the guy that bumblebee was with who had hired Bumblebee, that was him. Wheel Jack. Yeah. I didn't like him. Yeah. <laughs> he was just sort of there, and then I was like, exactly. well, "Why did you hire Bumblebee at all to do what again?" Like, and because Fire apparently they have a lot of allies that'll come out of nowhere to help him. So I'm like, "Why did you need Bumblebee?" <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was a little vague. It was a little vague. But look how cool also, what he is, is. Their money, like, what is their monetary system in this world? <laughs> Like is it is it Maybe oil slaves like, slaves yeah right <laughs> they love that so look at when he transforms though that's pretty cool right look at this oh. 
It's mm, nice looking. Pretty nice badass. Looking yeah. So in these toys, do they like do they come apart? Or yeah, they that... transform. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't it's come nice. apart. They they just transform. So it's like a car. <laughs> and then that was the fun thing. Like when you first purchase them, I think they usually come in the vehicle and then you figure out how to transform. But you got to do cool. it carefully because of you got to make sure you're bending it the right way. Otherwise, you're breaking your toy. You know, it'll come with like instructions, but usually you can yeah. figure it out. You just kind of start pulling on things and feet come out and legs. And I you think my I missed in the show. I missed the little like Autobot symbol turning around to the Decepticon yeah. symbol. <laughs> da, 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 da. Exactly. <laughs> I missed that. That's true. Uh, I think my least favorite was Bumblebee. It was like, oh, that's right. Sorry, you didn't answer that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. I was. All, I used to always root for Starscream to beat to to kill Megatron. I remember that because Megatron was kind of boring, and I'm like, hey, give Starscream a chance. Maybe he's got some ideas. He seems ambitious. He seems to really want to be cutthroat about this. He'd be like, we can kill the Autobots right now, and Megatron would be like, not yet, you moron. We have to watch what they're gonna do when they move this rock over here. And I'm like, I think Bumblebee has this right i think he knows what he's talking about you want to kill those sorry yeah starscream <laughs> never bumblebee <laughs> I, I, feel like, it, I feel like starscream would be the end of the the decepticon he just put like all out attack and that's it and that'd be like his plan <laughs> or the end of the autobots could be it's true fair point <laughs> the 50. end of the villainous autobots uh <laughs> threatening to take down the majority yeah <laughs> <laughs> the the 14 Autobots that are like stealing Energon and they're they're still fighting to hang on to the people that have come up from slavery to take over the world in a beautiful democracy. You know? Yeah. Autobots problem. And that's weird. So is it established like in this law? I don't I mean, I I guess none of us would know the answer to this, but like the is it established like the Autobots used to be the the masters of this slave race, and now Megatron is just all but taking them over and like the Autobots are actually the one percenters and they're just this is yes. A, <laughs> this is their last battle is trying to hold on to power. They just want to get their mansions back. Why can't they, they be allowed to do that? They did say they were fighting together though. Uh, mm, Megatron said okay. he was fighting with Optimus Prime. I so see. at some point in time they were on the same side. I'm not sure who So Megatron against. was just like, let's wipe out all our enemies, and Optimus Prime was maybe more like, you know, look, we're good now. Let's just let's just rebuild yeah. our, you know, okay. war is not always the answer. Thing. Well, that makes that a little be... bit more sense then. That makes the Autobots a little less bad on the spectrum of good and bad. Maybe they all came up from servitude and there's some yeah. other masters that they defeated Overseers. or something. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Um, look, this is fun. I love pooping on Bumblebee as much as the next guy. <laughs> but Peter Holmstrom, let's talk about you for a moment, shall we? Yeah, sure. So first things first, you got a new podcast? What's up with that? Yeah, uh, me and a, a good friend, uh, Daniel Noah, we started a podcast um, specifically looking at the Young Indiana Jones TV series, which is a kind of hidden forgotten gem from the early 90s. Um, it was a George Lucas produced show, um, a spinoff of the very successful at the time, uh, Indiana Jones film series. Um, and it aired on ABC for two seasons, got canceled, but then they also produced a number of TV movies after that. Mm. Um, and this is in many ways, it's a show that is a precursor, uh, or you could say like a trial run, I guess, for the Star Wars prequels. Um, George hired a lot of the talent that then rolls over into the Star Wars prequels um, in this show. And you see him experimenting with a lot of uh, a lot of technological ideas that then get further developed um, in in the scope of uh, the prequels. Um, so it's a show that we've both had like a soft spot for. I guess we'd almost say guilty pleasure for it for many years. Um, and then we kind of joined forces and we're like, you know what? This is actually worth worth talking about. This is worth uh, shedding a light on. Um, because it was canceled so early in its run, there hasn't been a lot of behind the scenes scholarship for it. So we, we in many ways are interviewing people that have never been interviewed before um, and we're, you know, delving into topics that uh have have kind of largely been forgotten and so it, it feels very fresh um super insightful wonderful conversations and uh we we've had a great time so far mm-hmm. that's awesome 
Where can we where can we get the podcast? Is it just from any podcasting or is it on Yeah, YouTube podcasts or? are uh anywhere, wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts or Spotify are probably your best bets uh these days. Um, but also I you know, we're on Overcast and all the other I think Amazon uh has their podcast service as well. Um we also have a great like Instagram uh page. Just type in I didn't mention the name of the show. It's called the Young Indie Chroniclers. Um and it's a wonderful Instagram. My friend Daniel works in marketing over at Fox. So he has a lot of like skill sets that I I have no idea how the hell he does these things, but he's develops a lot of like wonderful uh little videos and kind of compilation videos and such that he posts on our Instagram um that are are wonderful and insightful and uh and so you can go check those out nice uh it looks like it's at young indie pod on instagram right yes that that is correct yeah. there it is yeah young indie pod that's indie with a y not an ie but also speaking of amazon.com in a matter of weeks we're gonna have the hard cover back for uh your book yeah Woo-hoo. Oh, wait, yeah. that was last March. I thought I said it was last March. Yes, yes, yes. So, <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, oh, I guess it's sold out and now it's coming back in March. But no, it's it's no, been since uh, last March. So tell us a bit about this. Yeah. So I, I'm also a, a nonfiction author. Um, I write uh, oral history books about the franchises that uh, often all, all of us are talking about at, at ad nauseum. Uh, so uh, my first book was called The Center Seat, uh, 55 Years of Trek. And that was about the Star Trek franchise, kind of, you know, early days up through the end of Enterprise. Um, and it has interviews with pretty much everybody in there um, and kind of uh, edited and stitched together into a way that their quotes create kind of a narrative out of that. Um, so that one's out. And then I have uh, three books coming out this fall, um, two that are on the Star Wars franchise and then one that's on the uh, Simpsons franchise. And so those will also be oral histories and they're all coming out um, at various times this fall, September, October, uh, November. So, wow. Let's check great those stuff. Exciting. Yeah. Definitely keep us posted on all that. And where can people find you online besides Young Indie? Pop? You know, um, I think the best bet, I'm on Instagram, uh, also uh, on Twitter for, for the time being. But on Twitter, I'm uh, at Peter underscore Holmes. That's H-O-L-M-S 1138. So that's my Twitter handle there, uh, Peter like underscore Holmes 1138. Star Wars fans will know where you got that number. I'll tell you that much. And yeah, that's very true. That's very true. And then on uh, uh, Instagram, it's the exact same handle there, uh, Peter underscore Holmes 1138. So um, cool. Yeah, check, check me out. All right, everybody, check that out. Um, also, I got a little hint real quick because I, I had a feeling when I was watching this show, I had a theory. I was like, maybe Jetfire, that guy Jetfire looks like a good guy to me because he's he's white. All the others were kind of dark, you know, dark colors and dark. And he looked white with the red and all that. And so I had a theory, maybe he leaves the Decepticons and goes to become an Autobot. So I just did a quick search on him. And wouldn't you know it, Check this out. Here is the Jetfire toy. If you look cl- closely here, he's an Autobot, that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Because he was story. the guy who was like, well, we shouldn't kill them. It's not it's not right. honorable. It's, the, it right, right, the way, arm. Yeah, the way he was acting just kind of made me yeah. think like, I, I think, I thought he was going to, might change over in that very episode. But no, that would be something happening in that episode, which... There is against the rules, I guess. Anyway, Muhammad knows what time it is. It's time for the terrible twos. Bottom line. Bottom line. I wonder if anybody goes the other way. I wonder if anybody's an Autobot and becomes a Decepticon. They go dark. I hope Bumblebee. Um, There's no way. He's he's too chicken. Um, <laughs> all right. The final two questions of the show. Question number one, Dr. Muhammad Noor, on a scale of one to ten, what would you give Transformers... War for Cybertron Siege. Yeah, it was it was okay. You know, it was good graphics, you know, good world building. Talky. <laughs> that part was not so good. Uh the dark for me was not necessarily negative. It was, you know, it was okay. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna just on balance give it a 5.8. You know, it was, you know, it was okay. 
<laughs> didn't hate it. I didn't at the end. I wasn't like, I can't believe what, what trash was that. I can't believe I was watching that. Like with Silverhawks. <laughs> <laughs> Silverhawks was pretty bad. Oh, uh, what about you, Peter Holmstrom? Uh, Peter um, underscore Holmes, 1138. <laughs> Uh, I, I gotta, I gotta say when I was watching it, I, I was yearning, yearning for the days when I watched the real Ghostbusters for this show. <laughs> um, it's, uh, uh, this, this was a slog. I, I actually thought the graphics were a little wonky too. It felt like there was a lot of times where they had to go back and like do a quick fix on things. I, I thought mm. there was a lot of like weird kind of fluctuations in the, in the quality level. Um, so I don't know, I'd give it like a give it like a 3.5 like it you know it's not completely you know there's some interesting it, 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 there was clearly thought put into it this wasn't just like thrown together but it uh to me it just didn't come together in, in the way that uh it was intended to be um so yeah 3.5 mm -hmm. uh i also used to love the jets because they're like five or six of those jets and you can really only tell them apart by their colors like one was like blue and yellow and actually they did say his name thundercracker and then there was also dirge that was like purple and white or something starscream we know was red and blue anyway uh for me it's a 3.7 oops not very good uh but part of that is because i wanted to see the characters more and one way you could see the characters more so i put in a little more color in there don't not everything has to be dark and grim and quiet and blah, blah, moody Brooding. like let me see a big green jeep jumping around and shooting trying to shoot a, a red jet out of the sky and stuff like that and then you're like whoa you could then you can tell the characters apart because you see what they transform into their colors are more vibrant it's not everything's like gray with a hint of yellow it's like yellow give me yellow so that i can see <laughs> what character that is so we couldn't really visually tell who the characters were they also didn't have a you know they did a good job of introducing Bumblebee and Wheeljack and a couple others. We got basic stuff, but yeah, 3.7 overall. It was what I put. It was, I said, it was kind of boring and talky and dark. I want to see them and how cool they are. Not this dark crap. Oops. So that's uh, question number one, everybody. Question number two is as follows. Muhammad's going to do hand gestures. Uh -huh. uh, for the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Transformers War for Cybertron Siege. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Dr. Nor, would you of your own volition watch the second episode? I actually thought about this one a little bit because I was like, almost a yes, but it's not. <laughs> it, it doesn't quite get over that threshold. I mean, again, it's one of those ones if, you know, if my son was still younger and he wanted to watch it, I would totally sit down with him and watch it. Am I ever going to go click on Netflix and be like, I want to see the next episode of Transformers War on Cybertron Siege? No, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> so that sounds like a maybe. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of a maybe, but it was on the no side of maybe. So if you have to pick um, on a binary, it'd be no. Uh, what about you, Peter? Would you of your own volition watch the second episode? absolutely not and honestly it turns me off from the whole transformers franchise <laughs> like, oh it's like i don't think i, I want to visit any of this anymore <laughs> it's it's uh oh it was it was it was a rough one yeah you know i watched this last night and i couldn't come up with a yes or no last night i just put it's a tough choice uh i certainly most likely will not watch it but i'm trying to decide would i just to get a little more transformers in my life? we should all get a little more transformers in our lives you know but you know because i want to revisit those characters and the characters that i remember as a kid and all that but it's really close but i think i'm gonna have to lean no no similar to me yeah it's it's really close though it's really close and i might I might someday just turn on the second one out of curiosity, but it just it just felt like it didn't give me anything I was really interested in outside of the fact that they're revisiting something I used to love as a kid. That that's 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 the extent of it. If I hadn't watched it as a kid, I don't think there'd be I'd be like I don't even know what's going on here. It's just a bunch of grumbly metal stuff. It's not fun. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, three no's, surprisingly. 
Uh, Muhammad gave it a 5.8, which means he kind of liked it, though. It's yeah, true. Like I, said, it's I didn't regret high. watching it. It was interesting to me. I just I actually liked this sort of growing more of the story of like how they how, how they came to be. To me, that was the positive that pushed it up a little. Like, oh, mm-hmm. interesting. Huh. But yeah. I, I'm, I'm not so curious. That I'm going to actually go click on that. Episode. Yeah. So that's why it's like not a hard no for me. Like yeah. I'm like I'm like right now I'm thinking Muhammad, I'll do it if you do it. I'll watch it if yeah, you same. watch it. Yeah, same, same, <laughs> like if, it. if if you're if you go like you know what I want to give a shot. I, I might be like you know what me too. Let's that's compare right. notes. You know let's see what happens. Maybe you know or maybe we'll just get like we'll hang out together. We'll make popcorn. Put some Parmesan cheese on it, or like I was hanging out with you and watch even the stupid Silverhawks. I mean, <laughs> I do that. Oh the, that there is a friend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, Peter, it's been so much fun having you hang out with us. Hopefully, we'll get a good show for you one of these days. <laughs> 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 Who knows? Third time's the charm. Everybody, That's the charm, baby. If you'd like us to review a cartoon spinoff or sequel or reboot. In the comments below, type WTF and the show, as well as where we can stream it. That's very important. Like this one was streamable on Netflix. Super easy. No problem. And if you do that, we will review that show. Maybe. Maybe. Thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. What I'm trying to say is this podcast was dark and talky. I'm going to say the opposite. This podcast was much lighter than the show we reviewed. <laughs> this, podca- this podcast had a lot more laughs than the show we reviewed. Yeah, also like 40 to zero. <laughs> so uh, everybody, thanks for hanging out with us. We really appreciate you. Leave us your comments in the comments section below. And remember what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg always likes to say. Don't forget to be an organ donor and don't forget to watch the first of things. All right, this can be sadistic. Freeze frame like your favorite character. <laughs> Peter's like, what? <laughs> <laughs>